I'm going to sand over the whole surface of each piece. This is going to help the paint to stick really, really well and also give everything a uniform finish. Then I'm also rounding off the edges. This is the same as you would need to do if you were making these out of metal. So it's going to give it a more convincing look. And then for the very front edges, I kind of just gave those a little bit more of a sharpened edge. I just thought that looked a little bit more interesting than just having all of the edges around it. It's definitely time consuming to have to sand all of these pieces, but it is worth it to get a really nice finish. For the knuckles, I had already started sanding those, but I decided to sand them a little more to get rid of some more of those lines and to really just emphasize that single fold in the center and smooth out all of the other kind of angles that were left down there. Then of course you gotta just remove all of that sanding dust. Now there were a couple areas where the bend that I did in the previous video to get that crisp edge, some of the areas had cracked just a little bit, so I just filled those in using the 3D printing pen and a little bit of flexible filament and then sanded those back down. And so no harm done there, there wasn't really any need to reprint, although that would have also probably fixed the problem. But if I can save a piece just by adding a little filament, I'll do that because I don't really like wasting pieces unnecessarily. Also on the flaps for those knuckles, I sanded those a little bit too thin, so I just fixed those also with some of that filament from the 3D printing pen. It's a really great tool. The knuckles were a little bit rough still, so I used some filler primer to get a little bit more of a smooth finish. And then also one or two of these pieces for the hand probably needed to be reprinted, but I'd prefer just to fill it in and fix it that way than just, you know, have to throw this away. Once I did the filler primer and sanded it down, I really liked the under color there, just a light splotchy finish as a base coat. So I matched that with some acrylic paint and did the same splotchy finish over all of the pieces as my first paint layer. With the flexible filaments, acrylic paint is the best finish that I have found. I've tested it with spray paints also, and it tends to crack, especially over time if you use a spray paint. But with the acrylic paint and then a sealer over top of that, I've had really excellent results. So that's the finish that I'm going to be doing for everything with these gauntlets. Now I'm starting out with some metallics. I've got some gold and also some black and burnt umber. We're going to do more of a warm coat underneath and then we'll do the silver on top. I find that if you do just straight silver, it looks really flat and not too interesting. So I like to do a mix of silver and gold even when I want to ultimately look more silver. With the acrylic paints, you want to just dab it on really splotchy and then brush most of it off. We don't want the layers to get too thick because then you do risk running into crackling or wrinkling later on. Although I haven't actually experienced that with the acrylic paint because I have been doing this type of finish on other things and it's really great. But still, just keep it nice and thin because we're going to be doing a few different layers on here. So do this base coat over all of the pieces and get that nice foundation established. And you can do a couple of layers here if you don't get quite enough on there the first time. It's definitely better to err on the side of making it a little bit too thin and add more later if you need to build it up a little bit more. The nice thing about working with the acrylics is you don't have to have the ventilation, the respirator, so that's an added benefit, but it's also just the best finish for flexible filaments. Still gets pretty messy, but I'm a fan of soap and water cleanup. Now we're going to bring in the silver. So I have two different shades here that I'm going to be dry brushing. And you can see that it's going to be really subtle. We're not going to be just solidly painting over that undercoat. We're just going to very lightly brush on some silver accents that's going to give it a silver tone, but keeping all of that depth from the layering. So I've got a light silver and a dark silver, and I've just got both of them in my bowl, and I'm kind of just dabbing a little bit on, brushing most of it off onto the paper towel there, and then dry brushing on the edges of each piece, and then just kind of randomly over it, just to give it a nice little bit of a highlight on the edges, and then let that darker, warmer tone show through. Again, this is pretty time consuming, just because there are so many pieces to the set of gauntlets, so you just gotta set aside enough time and be patient and don't rush it. Same for those knuckle pieces. We're going to brush it on, focusing more on the bent areas and the tips and leave the darker areas more in the crevices. Because this is supposed to be old weathered metal, we don't need to worry about trying to get a perfectly smooth finish here. We really wanna bring out the textures and emphasize that as opposed to trying to get a glassy, smooth finish like you might be doing if you were trying to make something look like brand new metal. 
You could stop really at any of these stages, either with just the dark tones or with just the dry brushing. I do like to take it one step further like I did with the foxhead medallions in a previous video. I've got this really nice rusty color that I love to use and I will put a link to that uh, below. And then I'm mixing that with some burnt umber and some black to start building up rusty layers towards the edges and especially picking out any areas that maybe had some little imperfections anyway, those are perfect to rust those. And then on those edges where I sharpened it a little bit, I'm really just lightly dry brushing with a mostly black color to give it that sharpened edge look and bring that out more. And then also just with the umber kind of brush some down as if the rust had started dripping in some areas and just keep this really subtle. We're not trying to cover up all the work we just did, but really just make it one step further in the weathering process where it definitely hasn't been maintained over the many, many years that the Witch King might have been wearing this. And it just makes it a little bit more interesting and helps to have all the pieces stand out from each other a little bit more. Anytime there's more variations, it's going to read better from a distance. So we've got the layers of the dark, the light, bringing out those harsher edges where the metal's bent, and then the rust to even more emphasize any irregularities. So it's starting to look pretty interesting now. It definitely doesn't look like a flexible filament at this point. That rust color is also nice to mix with umber and do different shades of dirty grime. So that's what we're going to be doing later on with the gloves. So it's a really nice versatile color. Next we need to seal this and I've got this outdoor water-based sealer that I use all the time now for flexible filaments over acrylic. I did a test in a previous video just trying to find the best one and this was the one that was most durable out of the three that I tested in that video so I've just continued to use that and had excellent success with it. You do want to just brush it on and then wipe almost all of it off. You don't want to put this on too thick. It's really just a matter of letting it soak into the acrylic and then wipe off the rest and then once that's dry for about half an hour or so, you can do a second coat, again, just dry most of it off. Once it's fully, fully dry, like overnight or 24 hours, not at all tacky, just hit that with a really fine steel wool to smooth it out just a little bit and also to take the shine down just a notch or two because we don't want it to be too bright and shiny looking. It doesn't need to look old and weathered. I'm going to be installing the finger plates on some strips of Lexin. I wanted this to have a little bit more rigidity, kind of the fingers to stand alone and hold their shape without my fingers having to reach all the way to the end, but they also need to be able to bend. So this is kind of a good semi-rigid material and I had a scrap lying around, so that was perfect. So I'm cutting out half inch strips and then just trimming them down to about the right size for the fingers and taking off any sharp corners so we don't snag anything or damage the finish. And I'm going to add holes every inch. That's the spacing that the finger plates need to have that I figured out when I was testing them. And then I'm going to heat this up a little bit just to put a bit of a bend towards the end of each finger so that they don't just stick out straight. <laughs> you don't want them to have a more natural curve to them even when my fingers aren't making them bend. I'm gonna just poke those holes through using a wood burner with a nice round tip that's the right size for uh, attaching these later and then just kill the shine a little bit with some sandpaper so that the paint will stick. And we're going to use the same black acrylic just to basically cover this up. It's not really going to show, but it might peek through in a few areas. So I'm just going to make sure that everything kind of just blends in when it's just a support structure underneath. So paint it black, let it dry, throw some sealer on there just so that the paint doesn't scratch off. And then we're good to go to install those with the fingertips in a bit. While that sealer is drying, I'm going to make some rivets using some scrap three millimeter flexible filament. So I'm just trimming off some lengths and then I'm going to start melting the tip a little bit on the wood burner. Then add some extra filament using the 3D pen and then just flatten it out a little bit and make a nice nail head shape on that. Now you'll see me using my fingers a lot for this. You do have to be careful because the filament does get very hot and will burn you if you're not careful. But eh, my fingers are my best tool for this. so. <laughs> I deal with a little bit of burning. And just test and make sure that the head is large enough to not pop through the holes that we're gonna be putting in the pieces. So it's gonna be just big enough to fit the filament through, but then the head will catch it so it's nice and secure. And I just made a whole bunch of these. We're going to be using them for the hand plates and knuckles. So for the hand plates, we do need to poke some holes because I didn't pre-print this with holes. I wanted to wait and 
make sure that the holes were going to be in the right spot once they were already heat molded and printed. So I set them all together and figured out where the holes needed to be and then just burned those in with the wood burner. I've got that nice rounded tip on there. It's the perfect size for the filament rivets. So we've got all the holes poked in. We can just go ahead and run the rivets through now and make sure everything fits together properly. I did find that it's better to go ahead and remove any extra material on the holes because otherwise the rivet area starts looking a little bit too bulky. So double check that everything moves properly and is positioned right where you want it. Now we can go ahead and finalize the riveting attachment. So just trim off that extra filament and melt down the end so that it's securely fastened in place but can still move. My finger support strips are dry now, so I'm going to get started with installing all of those finger plates. I was going to use rivets for this too, but I decided to try something a little bit different since the rivets do take quite a while to make. And also I want to make sure that these are super secure with no chance of any of my finger plates falling off at any point. So I'm using some hemp cord and then I'm just making a nice easy to work with point using the filament from the 3D pen. And I'm going to tie this off to the end of each of the plastic pieces and then lock that in place with some more of the filament. We'll thread that through the first plate and tie it down. Just add extra filament to blend the end of that strip into the finger piece because that's going to show just a little bit. So we want to make sure it looks okay. And then thread on the lower plates below, tying each piece down to that polycarbonate strip. I've added extra filament behind the piece and then on each side so that there isn't any wobble. We don't want these getting out of alignment. So you just want to make sure everything can flex still but is securely fastened down. The nice thing about using the 3D pen like glue is that it does mix in with those fibers of the string so that nothing is going to come untied. It's also really fast and simple to work with. The only part that might show a little bit is on the top there. So make sure that looks nice and neat, but the back part, you really just want to make sure it's secure and not too bulky, but it's not going to end up showing once it's glued onto the glove. So I've got all my fingers attached now. Of course, there's different numbers of plates depending on the finger. We've got three plus the tip for the thumb, four for the pinky, five plus tip for the ring, six for the middle, and five for the pointer, all of those plus the tip piece there. My holes in the knuckles kind of got a little bit lost in all of the sanding and filling, so I'm widened those back out using the wood burner again, just cleaned up the openings. We are going to attach these using rivets, so we want to make sure that the hole is the right size for that. And then get some nice long rivets and stick them down through those holes, and we're going to lock them in place using the 3D pen. That makes a nice convenient knuckle plate with these attachments now. We're going to attach those directly to each of the finger strips. The longer points are going to go backwards and the shorter points forward, so just make sure that you get the knuckle plate oriented properly. We're going to poke another hole right below the last plate for each finger and insert the rivet that's on the knuckle to the correct finger. Make sure you get them in the right order. And we're going to lock those in place with some filament in just a minute, but first let's go ahead and work a little more on the thumb because it does need a couple of more plates. We've got the tip, the three small plates, and then we have two lower plates. The middle one is going to be riveted in place, and the lower one we're going to attach using that long string that's left over from tying on the finger plates. You gotta find the right position and poke another hole for that middle thumb plate, and then add a hole at the top of the lower thumb plate. Now the point does go backwards on that, and for the middle plate, the point that is the same size as the upper finger plates is the one that goes up, so it's all just a continuous line, and then the smaller point facing down. So I'm tying on the lower thumb plate, and we're going to secure that just like the other pieces using the 3D pen. You can go ahead and trim those strands now. We don't need any more string. Then the upper thumb plate is going to get riveted on through that extra hole we made. Now I am keeping that offset from the polycarbonate strip just a little bit to ensure that there's enough room for the finger to flex properly. So you don't want to lock it down completely. It won't bend very well. So just offset it a little bit use the 3D pen to hold it in place, and then also the wood burner is helpful for thoroughly melting down the end of that rivet. Now the thumb is fully assembled for the fingers. Now the outer fingers, so it would be your pinky and your pointer, we don't need the strings for those anymore, but the two middle fingers for each hand, we do want to keep those strings because we're going to tie those directly to the hand plate pieces. Using the 3D pen and the wood burner, I'm doing the final attachment for each of these fingers. We're going to pump extra filament over the top of the polycarbonate strip to make sure that it's securely held in place. And then we can also trim off any extra at this point. Just keep checking to make sure that there's no wobble left and add more filament as needed. 
we're going to add two holes at the top of each of the hand plate sets and run those strings from the two middle fingers through those holes. This is going to ensure that everything stays properly attached and doesn't shift. It's also going to be attached to the glove, but it's nice to have this as a single unit. So I'm adding extra filament, tying everything down really well, and just making those knots nice and secure. I'm sanding the tips of the fingers a little bit because that front part is going to show past the glove a little bit, and I want it to blend in nicely with the finger plate. So I'm just smoothing that out on each of the fingers. And then also the rivets, I'm just starting to kind of make those look a little bit more refined, a little bit flat on top, clean up any rough edges. And that middle part for the hand is attached now, but I need to attach the thumb to that hand assembly. I decided to go with a 3D printed hinge for attaching the thumb to the hand assembly. Now it's a fake hinge because it's just a flexible filament that bends, but it has the right look and it fits with the style of the rest of the pieces. It's also super sturdy since it is all just one piece. So I quickly modeled that in Fusion 360, printed a couple of them out, only takes like 20 minutes. <laughs> and those are printed in Cheetah there, so I added the rivet holes already. It's nice and easy to install them. But first I do want to sand them down just like the rest of the pieces. Just round out those edges a little bit, make sure that all the print lines are gone. And now they're looking pretty cool. So we need to poke some holes for that. So just line it up on each of the pieces and mark it with the wood burner and then fully burn that hole through. Clean up all the edges, make sure everything's nice and neat. And then we can go ahead and just test to make sure that the hinge is in the right spot and mark the same way for the holes on the thumb piece. Poke your holes through for that, clean up those edges, and we're ready to put in the rest of the rivets and just make sure everything fits together properly. That looks pretty good. We can also just trim off that extra polycarbonate at the end of the thumb now. We aren't gonna need that for anything. I noticed once this was assembled that the underside of the knuckle plates I was showing a little bit more than I had really planned on, so I decided to fill that in with a little more filament from the 3D pen and just sand it out a little bit so that any bit that does show through still looks finished like the rest of the pieces. I'm also going to add another attachment to hold down the edges of the knuckle plate, so I poked in a couple more holes and added another rivet on each side of the knuckle plates. I'm going to start painting up these hinges and some of the rivets here and also the tips of the fingers that are going to show and then also the undersides of those knuckles. We also need to touch up where the string is attached on each of the finger plates, just because that might show through a little bit when your hand is bent. And then just weather the hinges the same as everything else so it all looks cohesive. I'm gonna do the final attachment on those knuckle plates. I'm just trimming off the excess filament, leaving it a little bit offset. I don't wanna pull it in too tight because it changes the shape of the fingers and makes them kind of overlap each other. So I just left the rivet long and offset it a little bit. It's maybe, you know, not what I had in mind at first, but it actually looks kind of cool. You can also do the final attachment for the hinge. Trim off the excess and melt down the ends of the filament so you have a nice strong attachment. And then just add more touch up paint as needed. I kind of added a little bit of darkening around the edges of the hinges so they look like they have been part of the gloves all this time and maybe collecting some grime in the cracks. We do also need to seal all of the paint that's on the hinges and on the rivets here just to make sure that that doesn't wear off. So just use the same method, brush some on, dab off any excess and let it dry. And then just do a little quick sanding to take down that shine using some really fine steel wool. Our hand assembly is now all one unit per hand, which is nice not to have all those loose pieces everywhere. So we're gonna glue the gloves in now. I'm using contact cement for this. I'm just brushing it on to the inside of the glove, up each finger everywhere that the glove is going to touch. Also need to brush a layer on the glove. And I prefer not to let it dry completely for this just because I knew that I was going to need to do a little bit of repositioning because I didn't know exactly where everything was going to fit on the glove. So I brushed all this on, let it mostly dry, and then started installing the glove. And then I can just add more glue as I go to stick down any edges that it didn't quite reach or I didn't know where it was going to hit exactly until it was partially installed. I just put my contact cement into this squeezy bottle and it is so much nicer and neater than trying to use those little tiny containers that have the brush built in or use it straight from the can using a brush. This is the way to go. So I'm always gonna have my contact cement in a squeezy bottle now. I used some little clips here to hold down edges of the glove because I kinda had to do a little bit of finagling to try to get the seams to line up where I wanted them to. Now the fingers are extra long so that it all looks proportional with the rest of the costume since this is going to be a life-size Witch King. But for the width of the hand, I just kind of tucked any extra fabric underneath the armor and lined everything up with the seams on the glove, which 
looks a lot more deliberate that way, like it's supposed to be there, but obviously you will need to work with whatever gloves that you have and find where's the best place to align the armor and also ensure that the glove still fits you once you have glued it on to the armor. It's definitely a little bit of a pain and took some work to get everything positioned properly and stuck down and I did have to go back in later and add more glue. I didn't quite get all the edges stuck down the first time, but that's no big deal. We just use the squeezy bottle, add a little extra glue and clamp it down. And I didn't glue it all the way to the bottom because the gauntlet armor will need to interact with the wrist armor later on. There's going to be some overlap there. So I want to make sure that the glove can tuck into the wrist armor while the gauntlet back kind of overlaps with that wrist armor. So we'll get everything glued down as far as it needs to go and finalize that later on. And of course, anytime you're working with contact cement, make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated area because this stuff gets very strong very fast. Because of how I had this stretch to line up the seams, I did have to keep kind of gluing down some edges and adding more clamps. I kept wanting to pull away, so I'll probably have to re-glue that a couple of times until it gets really, really well fastened down. So everything's glued together, but there are little bits of glue showing, plus these gloves look brand new, whereas the armor is supposed to look all nice and weathered, so we want to make that look more cohesive. I'm going to use the Burnt Umber Black and that Rust color to weather out the gloves. We don't want any metallic paint in here because we want the gloves to still look like leather, just dirty leather. Add these grimy layers into the cracks and over the whole glove. It's fine if you get a little bit on the armor part too, that's just gonna make it look a little more legit. We want it to look like nothing has been washed for hundreds of years, basically. Now the end of that glove isn't really gonna show, but I just like to weather the whole thing just so it all looks nice and finished but ultimately that zipper will get tucked inside of the wrist armor, so no worries there. I'm also going to add a little bit of extra shadowing on the armor while I'm at it to put some fresh dirt on there <laughs> and make the plates kind of stand out from each other a little bit more with a little extra dirty shadow. We don't want to overdo this because we just spent all of that time making this nice metallic effect on all the pieces, but just brush on some black that has just a little bit of umber and rust in it and then dab off all that extra. We leave just a little you know, faint trace under there between each of the plates, as if it's been collecting dirt for a while. And we're not going to seal this because we want it to stay that matte, dirty color. If it does start wearing off a little bit over time with use, well, that's fine. It's just going to make it look more realistic. And the leather took this paint quite well, so it doesn't seem to be wanting to flake or anything at all. But again, if it does, no big deal. You can touch it up or just let it be, you know, flaky dirt. So the gauntlets are finally complete. It was a lot of work just because there are so many pieces involved in this design. I can bend all of my fingers so I can hold my sword and my flail. I think I'm gonna need to stick down those edges a little bit better, but I'm gonna worry about that later since I don't know where everything is gonna need to line up with the wrist armor quite yet. I'm gonna need to stuff the fingers a little bit towards the tips because they are so long, but I like the proportion of having the slender long hand. I think that's going to look good with the costume overall. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already if you wanna keep up with this project. I'll post links to the paints and the sealer and the filament that I use for this project in case you want to try them. Now these are affiliate links, so it helps the channel out a teeny tiny bit at no additional cost to you, so thanks for clicking those if you're going to be shopping anyways. Also, if you want to make your own Witch King gauntlets, you can head over to lindydesignlab.com where I have the kit with all of the 3D printed parts that you have seen in this video, or if you want to print them yourself, you can purchase the STL files. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon.